um, I'm sure actually a lot of you, a lot of the names look familiar. So I think you actually did attend Simon's previous um, short tutorial. So just for those that don't know the format, this is a short tutorial. Um, and at the end of the tutorial, Simon will be setting a um, small assignment, which will then um, be reviewed tomorrow for all those that want to take part and submit work. Um, the deadline will be midday tomorrow. And I mean, it will be on Simon's slide at the end, but I will be sending a follow up email as I usually do, which will have details on the submission, um, details on where to um, submit those images to. It will be a Dropbox folder. Uh, I'll also send a recording of this tutorial and also a PDF for your reference of um, Simon's tutorial. So, yeah, over to you, Simon. Cool. Are we recording? We are recording. Great. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for the introduction, Robin. Um, and thank you again to Leica for putting this all together. Um, as Robin said, the, the idea for this session is to give you guys an assignment. We're going to talk through a few ideas around the assignment to kind of kickstart some ideas, and then you'll go away and do the assignment. Um, this brief is about self-portraiture. It's probably one of the simplest ones, or seemingly the simplest. Um, I want it to mean a lot more than just a photograph of yourself. Any kind of straight depiction of what you look like probably isn't what we're going for. Um, taking part in the assignment means going away after the session, making some examples, submitting the examples tomorrow, and then we'll be reviewing them in the session, as Robin said. So when it comes to the best self-portraits, I think, they're not just, there's nothing special about a self-portrait that's different to a normal portrait. A, um, you know, it, it's, it's not just a picture of yourself. It's not just something that represents what you look like. It's something that involves the photographer and the role of the photographer. If you're making an image about the self, it's, it's portraying some aspect of you that you're trying to enhance. So for example, there are musicians uh, you photograph with your instruments, painters will paint themselves painting. It's, it's showing a, a, a side of yourself through an action, through something performative and capturing that. Um, there, there are so many photographers who just, you know, they'll find a, 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 something reflective and take a photo in the mirror and it'll be with them and their camera and, that, and leave it at that. But I, I'd, I'd hope that we can go further um, to deconstruct some ideas around self-portraiture, to talk about what aspects of yourself you want to emphasize or enhance, hone in on those things and then capture that. So to make it more than just a picture of you, to make it a photo about you, is to not just go for like a, uh, a passport headshot, which is just the face, which is just you. You know, that's the most basic way to show you, but it might as well just be like a, a sketch artist's approximation of you. You know, it, it, it's your physical features, but it gives nothing away emotionally or, you know, conceptually. When it comes to portrait photography in general, if you're, you're choosing what to reveal about your subject, what to conceal about your subject, um, and you, know, you can choose to give it all away, you can choose to give none of it away. And you know, that comes through in the expression, in the facial features, in what aspects of yourself you're showing. You, know, you, can, you can hide what you look like, but still show what you feel like, you know, what, you, what you embody, what you represent. Um, the first decisions, we come to when it comes to taking a self-portrait is deciding you know what aspects of yourself you want to be showing in the photo not what physical characteristics because what you're left with from that is you know it's it's your opinions it's your subjective experience of you you know which is why i think a lot of people avoid self-portrait because you know we, we can feel like not photogenic or, or um you know low self-confidence about what we look like but you know, everyone knows what their best angle is. It's not about just finding an angle that looks good and hiding the features you don't like. It's more about showing the emotional aspects that you like or hiding the emotional aspects you don't like. So it's not about technical skill. It's about the idea of yourself and presenting that idea in a photo. So it's not, I'll answer technical questions in the Q&A, but there aren't many technical, you know, tricks or secrets to making an image that's about you. It's about conveying the idea of you. Um, for me, this comes across in more than just the, more than just something stagnant, you know, it's, it's about showing 
a, a process of being you. So that comes across an action, interaction, and emotion. So if it's a photo of you doing something, you know, if it's if it's you as a photographer, it can just be a photo of you taking the picture, right? Or interacting with the camera in some way, or interacting with someone else, you know, or interacting with something else, or performing an activity. You know, are you using your face? Are you showing an emotion? Are you even showing your face? You know, hands. Um, if you work with your hands, there are good portraits to be had with the, you know, scars and different features that are not just a representation of what most people see when they look at you. You know, if you're, um, if you want to be using a self timer to go and do something else and set up a scene and, you know, use it almost as a studio setting, that makes sense as well. But it's about these, you know, these values of what are you doing in the picture that makes it more than just what you look like. Okay. Uh, eye contact is an interesting one. I think that the eyes give a lot away in a portrait um, and making eye contact with your own eyes is, is always an interesting thing because when it conveys to the audience, you're making eye contact with them, but it's, but it's you when you take the picture, you have to look at yourself or you have to look into the lens. Um, there are choices. If you, if you look off camera, if you're looking at something else, the eyes will guide you around the frame or you can just connect, you know, straightforward with, with the camera lens so that you connect with whoever's seeing the image. Um, so think about what, uh, what options eye contact gives you. Um, if you have other subjects who can be involved in the image, um, you know, you can photograph through other people or incorporate elements of people interacting with you and that way you get someone else's perception as well. Um, I, I, I always think it's an interesting thing to photograph yourself but with the assistance of someone else. So if you have access to that, that's definitely something to, to take advantage of. And then for the more abstract uh, understanding, I have, uh, there's a poem on the side of here. I'm not going to do a reading, but I'll leave it up just for a second. And it's about the idea that you are not the space that you're in, as in the space that you occupy is always not going to be the space that you're in. So photographing, aspects of yourself that you leave in your space so things like footprints shadow um you know the impression on a leather sofa crumbs when you've been cooking or like a, a coffee stain on a on a cup from a on, a on a table from a cup it's almost like the graffiti you were here and photographing those aspects of your life the way you impact your environment in in the immediacy of your home which i assume is where most people will be photographing this um it's it's a it's one way to photograph the idea of you without depicting yourself. Um, so as I said, the, these images aren't a technical exercise in creating something aesthetic. It's more about something conceptual. It's about whether you're photographing, you know, it, in, in simplest terms, you're either going to be photographing yourself by at arm's length, just pointing a camera at yourself, or you'll be finding something reflective like a mirror pointing into that or using a self timer, setting up the camera on a tripod or propping it on something and just photographing you. It, it, it doesn't go much further than those very simple steps to actually make the image, but it's about the concept that goes into that image. So the actual assignment itself is that you'll go away, you'll make these photographs, you'll submit them to the Dropbox links, which, which will be emailed to you. And then we're going to review them at two o'clock tomorrow. And it's not going to be a, aesthetic review but it'll be about how well you translate this concept of the self into the image uh, i hope that's made sense to everyone the next slide is going to be a q a so if everyone uses the chat box um, to to get in touch with questions about the assignment or anything else and i'll be happy to answer them and then on the slide after that will be the photographers i featured throughout the presentation so you can make a note of any of those that stood out to you if you want to use them for inspiration cool Robin, do we have any questions yet? I'll let them come through, but that was fantastic. A lot, a lot to think about there, actually. Hopefully. <laughs> really good. So yeah, if you've got any um, questions, either pop them in, well, always best in the Q&A panel. Please. Otherwise, just put them into the chat feed if you can't see the Q&A panel. And yeah, as Simon says, I'll be sending a recording of this webinar so you can go through um, what Simon said once again actually that was a lot of information to, to take on board so um i think a lot of people will probably want to watch it back um a copy yeah, of if anyone needs clarity otherwise um yeah play it back at like half speed because i know i can kind of 
regurgitate. <laughs> no, it was great. And nope, you do not need to use a Leica. You can use that's always the first question. Yeah, any camera that you have, even a mobile phone. Yeah, especially mobile phones. Those are the those are these selfie machines. So good, couple more questions. How do you make the photo more emotional, especially with self portraiture? So emotion, emotion in the photo can come from you as the subject, or it can come from the situation you're in, or from the environment, or from dramatic lighting. Um, to show emotion yourself, if you if you have difficulty, like if you if you have to force a smile and it feels fake, or you're forcing some expression, try and just you know take a moment, listen to maybe some music or something that will put you into a into a certain mood, and then capture that. But that's if you have a concept behind it. I think most self portraits, if you you know, as you go on, not just for the assignment, but in general, if you feel that you're, you know, feeling something especially powerful, you should probably document it and you should figure out a way to, to make it more honest that way, rather than putting it on for the, uh, you know, for the, for the ego of a, of a portrait. Um, for, in terms of lighting, is, is uh, Kat Garcia, is her webinar available for people to watch? for natural light and they can tune in for that. Is that, yeah. is that recorded? Cause that yeah, could be yeah. useful as a resource just in terms of uh, dramatic moody lighting that can, that, that definitely informs the emotion, but it's not something that I'm as equipped to teach because I rely more on natural lighting in terms of whatever I've got rather than positioning someone within that space of natural lighting or positioning yourself. I can, I, I, can, put, a, I can put a link to that in, in the follow up email as well. Cool. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, I hope that answers your question. And if not, um, then clarify it. Uh, or any, that, any further questions? Yeah, there's quite a few questions now all of a sudden. <laughs> cool. So yeah. I think that kind of um, answered Julian's question as well. Do you usually start with a clear idea or just take your camera out and let it flow? Um, in general, I used to start with more of a concept. I would have an idea of what I wanted to capture. Uh, this is just in general photography, not for any kind of self-portrait work, but it's my my favorite photos, the best photos I take are not the ones where I plan them out conceptually. They're the ones where I, you know, happen up upon something and I'm like, oh, that's kind of neat. I should maybe try and interpret that. And then it comes about. So allowing that kind of flow, but when it comes to having a plan or having an idea, have an understanding of what potential could exist in a certain situation. So when you see something, you know how you would work with it it doesn't necessarily mean to always start with exactly what the image would look like and then go and make that image happen. If you go out looking for the potential for images um, and then explore those possibilities, you'll find images that you didn't know you wanted rather than images you think you wanted, but you make them and you know, they're kind of unfulfilling. Great, thank you. Um... Exif data to prove date. No, you, um, you know, it's preferable to, uh, to, to, to do the assignment as given because then it's, you know, you're, you're part of the, the community of people who are all working on this project at the same time. But if you feel you have a, a, a portrait a self portrait that fits the criteria that you'd like to submit that you, that you feel is like the definitive one, then for sure submit it. Um, depending on how many submissions we get we don't know if we'll get around to specific ones but if anyone afterwards you know has ideas for if, if they want feedback or criticism specifically and they have a specific question then I'm, I'm sure I'll be happy to respond to that um, and I think we're, we were looking at more kind of critique feedback specific sessions for people with existing work anyway so that might be something to save and wait until we, we've expanded on those ideas I think that makes sense yeah it's to me are you, have you got the list of questions up? I, I do, yeah. I'm, yeah, I just thought you just grab one there. So sure. um, does it need to be the face or can it be the body only? It can, be, it can be not even the face, not even the body. It can be anything as long as you feel that it's representing an aspect of you. This is why I think, you know, people think of portrait and they think it's a picture of what you look like, but it's not. You know, it can be that and it most usually is, but it's, it's more about the emphasis on the self, not on the portrait. So when I've taken like self portraits of myself, they're not always 
what I'm doing or what I look like, but you know, there'll be, maybe I've noticed that, um, for example, I've been trying to capture it on my, on my right lens on most of my glasses. There's loads and loads of circles from where I keep smashing my camera up to my face when I take a picture. And I've been trying to capture that with different lights and like macro to really show like, this is the impact that my photography has on my glasses. And that's something that's so personal to me that no one else is going to have that image of me because no one else will notice. No one else is hopefully getting close enough to my glasses to see that that impact is there. But that's something that only I can show. So if you have something like that, that reveals yourself, that reveals an aspect of yourself, then you by all means capture it and translate it. But I think the, the hard part is that if I look at it and don't see what you're showing me, then I think it would be, it would be a, a a worse execution you know if you have to defend it with the explanation and this is the trouble i'm having with, with photographing my glasses marks is because without the explanation it's not as clear so i'm trying to figure out ways to include the camera viewfinder and, and different things so it's 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 more of a storytelling photo in that way but but no it, it absolutely doesn't have to be any aspect of your actual physical you know what you define as the self great i think that also kind of answers is it neo or nios um comments in the comment box i don't know if you've got that open too there's just a couple um there mm -hmm. one going back as well but i think that you just touched on that sure well i yeah I, I think people will always have ideas of what an image should be to fit certain categories but i think if you just it's more about possessing a concept that i'm going to photograph an, an image which will be a self-portrait but that doesn't mean that it needs to look like a self-portrait it means that it will fulfill the function of a self-portrait and the function of a self-portrait is to, you know, reveal those aspects of yourself. It's, it's your way of making a note about yourself that only you could know about because it's personal to you. It's not a general portrait that someone, it's not a portrait that someone else could make of you because that's their perception of you. So it's more about the self than about the portrait. So the actual genre of what a self-portrait looks like doesn't matter as much. I think that I think that makes more sense. Um, would you add a title, or is the image meant to speak for itself? Uh, I think no title is the image. The image is the image. Um, will you let, want to send more than one image? I think one or two, but preferably one if you have just one. Uh, Answered that one. That was the next question. Great. Um, so uh, you've done that one i think alfonso's you've you've touched on it can be something that represents you not necessarily have to be you yep um, slides yes we'll do in the follow-up email also with a, um, a copy of the recording of the tutorial yep um, and to gregory the photographers that inspired uh or, or the ones that i used for inspiration for for this slideshow will be on the next slide as well so that'll be there. Our self portrait is more powerful in monochrome. Um, it depends, which is kind of a, uh, a cheat answer for any question in photography. It, it will always depend on the, the execution. There can be powerful monochrome images. There's, there, there can be, you know, weak monochrome images, but it's about black and white is about what you're choosing to describe. If you want to describe an aspect of yourself that involves color, shoot a color photograph. If you want to describe an aspect of yourself that doesn't need color don't include color it's it's about the the function of what the aesthetic serves you know monochrome is an aesthetic it's a choice about what something looks like but it should fulfill a function if you don't know what function it fulfills then just shoot any image with whatever you have and, and don't worry about it but if you're thinking about shooting in black and white think about what black and white actually gives your photograph great answer a selfie and a self-portrait are the same. Um, <laughs> are they? Yes, I think that some of the you know some of the most emotionally honest and and true self-portraits are just the the casually taken selfies and group photos that you know gatekeepers of photography like to think oh you know this person will never look at this photo again they'll never print it it's just you know they they were on a night out and took a selfie but like no it's they made it for a reason there's this urge to make a photograph in that moment their response to that is to make this photograph. So it has value, even if it's, even if the value isn't in the photograph, if the value is in the process of making that photograph, then for sure there's value in it, but that wasn't your question. It's either the same. Um, 
I don't think I'm the authority to answer that question. <laughs> um, they, they can be whatever you want them to be, though, because terms aren't the thing itself. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, the woman that was just referenced, you're going to have all the references coming up in a second. Yeah, all of the photographers uh, whose self-portraits are included. Yeah. Can you go deeper and give us a better definition of what you mean by honest self -portrait? So so honesty is a, an interesting topic for me to talk about because it's something that I feel strongly about. So I'll try not to make it too much of a political rant and make it more about photography. Um, in terms of making an honest self-portrait, it's about understanding why you're making the self-portrait. So for the purposes of this assignment, you're just doing it because that's what we're all doing. There's no there's no artistic intent, which is you've decided to make a self-portrait unless you've been trying to but have you know you've taken this this webinar to to explain something maybe that you were figuring out but the honesty comes in when it's you and something that you're feeling or something that you want to communicate and someone or you know an audience that you want to communicate that thing to so you understand each of the steps of what this photo is going to do and then you make it with that intent so a, a dishonest portrait would be something like um you know if, if you're if you're putting on an expression if you're an actor doing headshots even that isn't dishonesty because it's for the role it's for the purpose of you know securing that acting gig you need to show your range so you're showing yourself as an actor but if you're acting for someone who doesn't know you're acting or if you're acting for yourself you know those aspects of you feel like there's an expectation of you to give away too much of yourself or to withhold too much of yourself and translating that into an image that will not be as honest a depiction of you as if it's entirely on your terms, entirely at peace with the image that you're making. Does, does that make sense? Or is that too, is that too yeah, philosophical? Right. Thank you. Um, a good question from Andrew. Any yes, tips for getting Andrew. to over the narcissistic feeling when making a self-portrait yeah uh the first step for you andrew is to take off the expensive watch <laughs> just kidding um it's to some extent it'll always be there you know if you're if you're taking it as a vanity shot like if you if you've come to this webinar to take a photo and you've decided oh yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna take this self-portrait i'm gonna submit it he's gonna show up on the slideshow and he's gonna you know say how good looking i am and how good the light is that's that's a narcissism that has nothing to do with photography, but there's always going to be some aspect of the self that you're dealing with, whether it's narcissism or whether it's self doubt or any of those feelings we associate with ourselves, whether they're positive or negative or ambivalent, there's going to be a feeling and it's better to feel that feeling and, you know, maybe even express it in the photo. You know, if, if you, um, if you have feelings of narcissism or you have, uh, like a, a hang up on narcissism that you you worry you might be perceived as being narcissistic then probably you aren't taking an honest portrait as 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 in my previous answer it's it's not coming from a from a, a place where you're being honest with yourself about it if you feel that you're putting on something or that it's going to perceived and be perceived in a certain way you shouldn't care how it's perceived but if you want to get over that feeling you can either enhance it you know you can choose to own it and show it or you can choose to you know see a therapist great thank you um does it still count as a self-portrait if the concept i have definitely definitely involves some heavy editing i.e composites two to three frames um for sure um i i i'm not uh, as i said it's not about the technical it's not about the technical side of things if you feel that you're you know well equipped to produce a, a conceptual image like that then for sure do it and I, i'd be very interested to see it um Personally, I prefer to, you know, if I've got a, an image in mind that involves, you know, multiple exposures, I'll try and do it in camera with my film camera or, you know, use mirrors or reflective or, or something. But if you feel that the best way to express aspects of yourself is by combining, you know, different elements of a frame, then for sure, um, do, do whatever you need to do. Thank you. Um, no restrictions on colour or black and white? Yep, no restrictions on anything. Uh, Favourite self-portrait photo? That's an interesting one because I think, I don't think I have a favourite of mine that I've taken. Um, 
and I don't know that it would be uh, fair of me to have a self-portrait of someone else because I don't know. For me, the, the purpose of a self-portrait is normally self-serving. It's normally to, to represent something in my work. It's to be a transitional image or, or to, to, um, to provide some context to something else that I'm showing in a body of work. It's, it's not, uh, you know, it's not to print and, and display as, a, as, a, as its own artifact. It's always to support something else. So knowing how personal they are to me, I don't know that I would look at a, someone else's self-portrait and go, oh, yeah, this is, this is the one. The ones I chose for the presentation are ones which are, are different and interesting than ones I normally see. I tried to make them as, as to, to show off as many different ways that I've seen people making self-portraits so that you can think about how they've done it, how you could do it. Um, having said that, there is a photographer whose name I can't pronounce annoyingly, uh, but I can give it to Robin. Um, to include in the email maybe and his he doesn't have one self-portrait but the way he makes multiple self-portraits um, the, the way he expresses himself in lots of different ways in lots of different images makes a lot of sense to me and tells me more about him than his other photography so I'll, I'll supply that to Robin and we'll get that out just because I don't want to butcher the pronunciation of his name thank you um, um, you show some good examples. What about your well? I think you kind of just answered Aaron's question. Yeah, and the 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 one on screen now is is one of me. Um, but it, but I I, th I think it, I think again it it gives away a bit about me that I'm I I, I I keep a distance from myself. I you know I'm quite small in my frames when I when it is self portraits. They're they're not close up representations of me. It's just me in a space. Um, so but, but then I, you've also mentioned your concept idea with your glasses which yeah would... but I, it's not very it's not very good that's the thing I, i've shown good examples because they're good examples i don't think my own self-portraits are good examples but i have a good grasp of the theory which is which is hopefully why i'm you know explaining it um like i can i can identify the concepts but i can't execute it like i can read a recipe but i'm, I'm not a good chef um in this regard but i'm it's something i'm working on so Maybe one day I will have a, a wonderful series of self-portraits, but as it is, I prefer them conceptually than to my own executions of them. Okay, thank you. Um, what's up? Douglas has just given us some good tips. Yeah, I mean, 2,000 picks on the, on the large side is probably great. Um, but yeah, for those that are not that savvy with resizing your images, I mean, don't worry too much, as long as they're you know, about one megabyte, two megabytes, that's fine. But as I say, if you don't know how to resize them, just send over the JPEGs into that Dropbox folder and that will be fine. Thank you. Um, do you have any tips for someone who has never taken a selfie? Yep, it'll be the same tip to someone who's never done anything that they're, that they're trying to do artistically. And just, if, if you're shooting with a digital camera, every photo you take is basically free. So, you know, after you finish the webinar, go and take 200, 300, just from every angle you can imagine, in every lighting condition you can imagine, with every possible combinations of the things I've discussed, just make them and then look at them in like a wide uh, kind of contact sheet view in Lightroom and maybe one or two will jump out at you and then look at those, figure out why those jumped out at you, what you've seen in those um, and then explore some of the, the, the ideas in that. But you, you, you have the capacity to, if you have never made one before, you have the capacity to make lots of them in a very short amount of time. So use that opportunity to, you know, experiment in all different ways, no restrictions. Don't, don't think about it too much, just do it. You know, long shutter speeds, uh, wide apertures, deep apertures, whatever it takes on the camera, as long as you're making those images and then look at them and you'll know like you're, you'll almost lead yourself in the direction after that but but if you're if you if, if there's something that you um that you need to overcome because i think people kind of build these hurdles for themselves like oh i've never done this before so it's gonna be really difficult well no do that thing a hundred times and then you've done it and then whatever this, whatever photo you take next won't be the photo you've never taken before it'll be your 101st which means it's nothing to you which means the the that mental barrier is gone and then you're almost freer to make images 
with more restrictions. I hope that great is advice. helpful. Really great advice. Um, Sue liked your um, answer to the yep. narcissistic question. Thank you, Sue. I try. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about edited or composed photo? Let's say a portrait made from two or more photos. Yep, for sure. Go for it. I'd be interested to see it. Uh, um, Diptychs, yep, diptychs. same thing. Uh, are we are, is, are we going to be doing a um a webinar on diptychs? Is that a is that a thing? Because my uh, my upcoming one on on body of work is going to be more than two. But I think diptychs are specifically like photo conversations. I think that could be an interesting. Could be very to, interesting. Let's talk let's, about that. Let, let's know in the comments if you're interested in that. For sure. It sounds interesting to me. Very quick recap. I think the whole thing was the quick recap. Um, yeah. Well, you'll you'll be getting the recap also with the slides and also with a recording of the webinar. Uh, when will be the best time to take a self portrait? If not now, when? Um, you know, any any time that you that you have the inclination to pick up the camera, you shouldn't um, you shouldn't be beholden to external factors. Uh, but I, I feel that the question is kind of about light, and if you um if you did my uh my through the window webinar I spoke about you know if you if you um if you observe the way light works in a room across the day across a span of twenty four hours and have an understanding of the space that you're in, you kind of learn where the light will be um, uh, any any time where there's window light uh will be great for natural light and any time you can switch on a light and use that it's uh it's really not about that you know there's no um there's no secret trick or um or or window of ten minutes when the sun's at a certain position and you know and, and the stars are aligned. It's it's if you don't take control of it, you'll never make an image. Thank you. And last question. Oh look, actually Therese, we've got our first um, um participant for the diptychs. Um wonderful. Uh, well, she can be first. <laughs> yeah. And Lou's last question. You mentioned aesthetic differently in this to the story. Wouldn't the two be intertwined? If not, how would you differentiate between them? Um, I think the two can be absolutely separate. I think that you can have a, a, a photograph which is aesthetically, you know, grungy and murky and dark, but everyone in it smiling and happy. But whatever, whatever the, the takeaway is for the audience, it doesn't matter, you know, because that will be on the audience to take away what matters is that those two things are separate in the image. If the, I, I see the story in an image as either that the image shows an event, um, like a situation is, is shown in, in the photograph, or that the, the photograph is part of a series of, of photographs which all together tell a story. Um, and then the aesthetic is just what the image, you know, what the image looks like, what it feels like, what the, what compositional values have gone into making it what values when it comes to exposure, when it comes to all of the things that make up what a photograph looks like is the, is, is what I would say is the aesthetic and the story is just what's going on in the image. So you can, you can have any, any set of aesthetics to tell any kind of story, but that's on you. I can have a very moody, you know, side lip portrait and then I'm pulling a funny face They're they're two separate things, but they, but you can choose to intertwine them if you want, as with anything. Uh, but that's that's how I would differentiate between them to answer the question. Great. Um, thank you very much. And uh, you've probably seen the comments. Looks like you're going to have to <laughs> do some work now. I, I anything anything to pass the time for sure. I'll <laughs> I'll um I'll figure out some diptych stuff. Great. Well, yeah. Thank you again, Simon. Really interesting tutorial and as i say follow-up email will come probably in the next hour or so so look out for that um if you if you if you haven't received it in the next hour just send me um an email to the academy address um, and i'll make sure i forward it on to you um but yeah otherwise we both look forward to seeing your submissions yep these are the these are the photographers i referenced through the presentation just so that that's just so that you've got those um those who have instagram i've included that and those who were around before Instagram, do not. And yeah, are, are we is the, are we wrapping that up, Robin? Are we are we calling that? Well, actually, or is um, there any more to cover? Suddenly, there's a couple of questions that have just popped in. That's just uh, a thank you for the webinar from Douglas. Really enjoyed it. Um, 
Oh, Laura says, thank you. What would be a good example of a good photo written explanation? Is it just one sentence like a line of poetry? I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, sure. Is there a way you can rephrase the question? Sorry. Um, unless, it makes, unless you've got an interpretation, Robin, that you can... Well, not really. Um, from Lou, the question... Oh, we've done that one, actually. The explanation that goes with the photo, there doesn't need to be an explanation that goes with the photo. The photo is the explanation. The, the photo is your response to the idea of what you're making in a self-portrait. You don't... So, you know, for all of these, the same ex little explanation would go, this is a self-portrait. If you need to tell me what the photo is telling me, then the photo is not telling me it. It's, it, it's in the photo, if that's the answer to your question. Cool. Perfect. Great. So then I think, yeah, well, we'll wrap that up. Thank you all for joining. I look forward to seeing the work tomorrow. Great. Perfect. Cheers, Simon.